What's going on, Micro Scale Garagers? YouTubers and ladies and gentlemen, let's finish up the build. All right, of the Atomic DRZ two-wheel drive drift competition chassis. Um, earlier today, we ended up doing the steering. So now we're gonna put the servo on. Um, I ended up doing some of the electronic work. Scoot you guys back real quick. Ended up splicing that cable from the ESC into a Futaba JST plug. And then that uh, E-flight cable I had, I had to swap the uh, brown or the, um, the negative and the power because they were reversed. So now I can get steering. So let's go ahead and uh, hook this up real quick so we can straighten out the steering. Well, actually, We'll do that last because we gotta not put this on right now. I'll put this bracket on. This goes like this. And then we need two of those uh, four millimeter screws. So we'll go with those. Let me know in the comments if this extra light is helping. Use the round head screws, that way the flat head screws are probably going to the chassis. Oops, do not over tighten. I just cracked that. Come back off on that a little bit. But I do gotta tighten this one down some more. There we go. Alright, now I'm gonna need this uh, 2 by 8 screw. Let me grab my micrometers. That's like two. Three point nine eight. This might be a little too long. Take our one bearing. Take a little bit of grease. Servo horn. Pop that bearing in there like that. Still got some grease on my fingers, but just tap that on there like that. I'm gonna just move that around. I just dropped everything. Squish that like that. Slightly pick our frame up like nothing ever happened. See, I was trying to make it look all cool. Sitting on these jack stands, but you know how that goes. I really and truly don't have it sitting on jack stands right, but. <clears throat> <laughs> So then we can go ahead and screw this to the mount. Actually, we should probably put our ball studs in first, but 
I'm gonna do it backwards. There ain't no slop in that. Yes. Well, as tight as it's gonna get. All right, let's go ahead and get our ball studs. We need two 2.5 mils. Three D print a little, uh, like a little tool. Uh, I don't want to say thing of a bobber, but that's on my tip of my tongue, so I'm gonna say it anyways. A tool thing of a bobber, so that way when I open up all my parts bags, I can put like all my ball studs in one, you know, and put all the the other necessary parts I need in another. You know, like have one with my linkages, have one that's like a little box that's long enough for my linkages. A little parts accessory um, tool. So we're gonna put one ball stud up there. And then we're gonna grab another ball stud, 2.5. Once you start building everything, you just know which parts are what. I believe this one's 2.5. Screw it in. It's 2.5. I like how fluid moving that is. That's pretty cool. All right. Now, go our servo horn. What do we need? We need a 2.5 in the servo horn itself. one 2.5 ball stud left so that means we're doing good we're on our last one this is better hope that this is where it goes because there ain't no more and I don't even think they're land 100 ball studs are this big I think they're a little bit smaller all right and it says it wants our screw our servo horn to sit that is showing a servo horn a neutral point. All right, so let me turn my double on servo on. We'll get the neutral point. Hook everything up. We'll hook our motor up too. And I gotta set the ESC. I was trying to set it earlier today, but my batteries and my controller are really, really low. Turbo controller out of the uh, out of my Jeep. Now to set up the power or to set up the throttle, you're supposed to hold this button down and flick this switch at the same time. I've been trying to mess with it, but I can't seem to figure it out. But I have throttle. Then when I go in reverse sounds way faster so I probably need to reverse that or it just needs to be set up but mainly what we're looking for is we're looking for the servo and you want to make sure that your trims and your controller is all set to neutral all right now and then 
instructions. You want it to be just like that. That looks about right. not right. I didn't screw that in right. I screwed that in backwards. Ha, ah, that's got to go the other way. Oh, I'm not paying attention on that one. It felt like the divot part or the cut part was the, uh, the geared part. It was the geared side and, uh, So that's about that. Now we got to find a 2x4 KB self tapping thread screw. And it's one of these flat screws, this chassis screw. These are all chassis screws. See, the only one I'm thinking about is this one. And I believe I got two of those. They're supposed to be two by four inches. Just done one point sixty. But it ain't no dog on four millimeters. Uh three point nine five. Alright, so it is. That is the screw that we're gonna use because that is the one that's gonna bite into the plastic. Second, I was about to knock over all the screws. This don't seem right. Man, it's really not. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's that screw. He don't think it's that screw. chassis screws all right I'm in my toolbox power of the Orlando Hunter I went in there and I used some of these right here that screw right there I'm gonna thread it right in the servo real good so all I gotta do is just check this real quick Go ahead and build our linkage. Don't turn your screw while you're doing that, you'll burn out your servo. Alright, we need one by seven set screw, and it's gonna be the 2.5, those little tiny ones that we were building it the first time. 2.5 ball in. Set screw says it's 1.4. 1.4. About 7 millimeters long. Yeah, this is it. And the distance is supposed to be 1.4 millimeters across is the default setting. We're 
at 3.28. We got a ways to go. Let's check it now. supposed to be okay they supposed to be both flat All right, let's try it just like that 1.39 1.6 uh, I should have just left it alone 1.61 top ball stud. I'm gonna make sure that on the ball studs just like the Orlando Hunters, the big cup is where you would press the ball in. And that flat side is like the face of it. just like that oh, that's cool I like that all right and then the screws we're gonna use the two by four and the screws but I'm not gonna put the screws in yet until we build the other linkage oh wait a minute Sure, I did this right. Okay, now I was looking at it wrong. Step 11, ball stud is supposed to be zero millimeters, so I'm just gonna thread this in all the way. I was like, oh no, I thought it was the linkage that connected from the uh, servo horn to that the other servo horn. I don't know if that's like a bell crank or would that be called a bell crank or would that just be called a secondary servo horn? Zero millimeters. Oh, we gotta fix that. Servo now. All right, so I probably gotta bolt this up first, then uh, connect that servo horn. That's what I'll do. Pre 
pretty sure it's these two. That one started. screw in now in this tight fitting I might be able to get a screwdriver in there and pop that ball stud on just right back here now let me get some more screws in here that's really really brittle plastic too you don't want to break that servo horn it That is right there. I don't know if you guys see it. I'm just gonna pop it on. Near flathead screwdriver. Alright, try and pop it on with these tweezers. That was nice. Alright, so we got the servo on. Now we can go ahead and screw the servo down. see how they raise up when you go in the X pattern. out the steering now that's always exciting we almost got the electronics all set up oops that's channel three Oh, what am I doing? There's no battery. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's crazy steering. straight and that's without the gyro so but I think I gotta build another one of these JST plugs or whatever for the gyro to work because um I only have one of those so uh, where's the gyro the servo would naturally plug into here and then this would plug into this JST plug and then because I have uh, endpoints and stuff I need another one so I can plug it up 
and today but all I gotta do is just take another JST plug and then solder it to this with an empty yeah I think I got one yep take this one and we'll plug this one up solder this one cut it oh we will be able to use a gyro because all I need is just this plug da 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 he's a 313 Snoop Dogg da 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 all right, I'm all off. Let's uh, finish the build. Uh, unplug the servo. We'll go ahead and unplug the servo from that adapter too, since we're able to use the adapter now. And we'll take the gyro. Yeah, we'll just make an adapter for that other plug. Bam. We're getting things going. Ah, uh, except everything falling. This is fun. I'm not even using these jack stands no more. That's for when the car's done. I'm just gonna use this metal tin. That's better. Yeah. All right. Let's work on the front suspension now. Yeah, we get to build shocks. This is sweet. Step 12, attaching front shocks. All right, try and pop it on with these tweezers. That was nice. All right, so we got the servo on. Now we can go ahead and screw the servo down. Tighten them, you can see how they raise up when you go in the X pattern. That was tight. That was tight. Uh, don't like all that screws but I guess we can chest out the steering now that's always exciting we almost got the electronics all set up oops that's channel 3 Oh, what am I doing? There's no battery. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's crazy steering. pretty much straight and that's without the gyro so but I think I gotta build another one of these JST plugs or whatever for the gyro to work because um I only have one of those so uh where's the gyro the servo would naturally plug into here and then this would plug into this JST plug, and then because I have uh, endpoints and stuff, I need another one so I can plug it up into there. But all I gotta do is just take another JST plug and then solder it to this with an empty. Yeah, I think I got one. Yep. Take this one, and we'll plug this one up, solder this one, cut it. Oh, we will be able to use a gyro. Because all I need is just this plug. Da 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 da. He's a 313 
Snoop Dogg. Nah, nah, nah. All right, I'm all off. Let's uh finish the build. Unplug the servo. We'll go ahead and unplug the servo from that adapter too, since we're able to use the adapter now. And we'll take the gyro. Yeah, we'll just make an adapter for that other plug. Bam. We're getting things going. Ah, uh, except for everything falling. This is fun. I'm not even using these jack stands no more. That's for when the car is done. I'm just going to use this metal tin. That's better. Yeah. All right. Let's work on the front suspension now. Yeah, we get to build shocks. This is sweet. Step 12, attaching front shocks. All right, we got our shock towers here. We got two of these front shock towers. We're gonna use the short springs. Get two sets of springs here. I'm just trying to uncoil them. Well, I need tweezers for this. These are our fronts. These are the rears. short shaft apply some grease we're just going to use that the grease that we made up right there just blob some on like that set our shock in there like that take our short shock body it like that, and we'll get one of the little clips real quick. I think it's just one of the thin ones because they got the thicker clips. And we just pull that back apart. They're cool little like dampening shocks. These short shocks would probably work out for me to build a. Uh, like a little scale like what little crawler or 4x4 four four truck I'm thinking about like a Suzuki Samurai or something it's got them short little shocks on <clears throat> but this is so scale because this is cool and you got a two wheel drive drifter that might be a little bit too much grease Thick clip, where's the thin ones? Whoa, no, we don't need to be flinging that around. I got lost all the clips. Shocks right there. Go ahead and build the rear ones, might as well. Building shocks. These are the funnest shocks I ever built in my life. I mean, these are easy. I'm 
just going to use the thin Seeing if I had more of those smaller ones. Shock her bill. Now we're going to take our shock tower front. I don't know why we got two fronts, but that's cool. Just in case we break one. And how does that look? Two of these two and four screws. I'm going to put a ball cap on the end of it. that we're using it's a screw on type like this Hold on, let me get my big fingers out of the way just like that First hole, it's close to the other screw hole. Let's get a little snug real quick. screw on my spring on the shock on first yep yeah pop them shocks on first you can't screw that on without the without the shock it won't be enough room <clears throat> so Once we put it all together, it's going to keep it all compressed. Oh, now all this stuff going to start falling apart as you're trying to put it together. It's just the way it works. Set you like that, and then we the four millimeter linkage down at the bottom. And that's going 
tie it all together on the AR. It goes right here. Be using the wrong size because that was not screwing in. There we go, that's much better. Now, we should be able to turn this shuck. Pop them both on and screw it on. Yeah, just do the bottom half. Let's see here which way. Pop on the bottom halves. Okay, this Mr. Ball still don't want to go on. Now we can put our shocks on. We should be able to just set this in here like this. Boop. A little shock dampers over. Alright, it's got a little bit of compression there. So we're going to get this on here, push this down, i got to do this off camera. Alright, got it on, these screws lined up, <clears throat> that was fun, that's what I got to say about that shock tower, that was fun, I can't wait for the rear, the front is anything like the rear. I can't wait. There we go. Front suspension. That's nice. That's beautiful. Still looks lined up. Arms and everything's good. I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna let my buddy Ricky test it out. See how it looks. All right, so now we can move on past the suspension and we can start working on the battery mount. Yay, we can see if my battery fits. Ouch. This hooky part. Probably gonna go Y Jinkies. I don't know which hole it goes in. Maybe it goes in this one. If that lines up. Alright, so we got that part. And then we got these two chassis braces here. And we can get these in metal as upgrade parts. And then the body mount. Hell, body mount left and body mount right. Okay, so we move that one over here. We move that one over there, and then the other battery mount. And they're also curved too, so that should help. And it all takes the same. 
and four K screws. All right, so let's get these body mounts on first. The kit comes with a drill bit too, you know, and I believe that's to help drill out some of the holes probably. I'm gonna try and just set it down in there. Just kinda like that. And then we'll see about getting the screw fed in there. Nice. Same thing for the other side. Careful not to break it. So if you ever want to change it out, you'll be drilling it out and stuff. battery mounts on so I can see where the other one goes. So one is one screw is gonna go here. The other one, alright. this back hole and it looks like it's an adjustable battery mount too so it looks like you can move the battery back or forward mm, I don't know depending on the servo well, I mean you might be able to move it forward but then that's, I guess that's for like a smaller smaller battery or something and then I don't know if that's the right curve, but that's what I see on the instructions. So now we'll work on this side. And put this one on. I don't know if the servo wire should be in front or behind it, but right now it's going to be in front. Sorry about it working off camera. Just trying to work faster. Get the other screw in, and then we're gonna move on to step 14. All right, there ain't no moving this battery, but now that this battery's in here, it's in here. It fits with a little bit of squeezing, so you probably can take some sandpaper and go around the inside walls and make this battery. Alright, now, <clears throat> before my GoPro just shot off on me, the SD card was full. I got this fly battery, so you can use these batteries in this car. Fits pretty well, but you do probably need to sand that out, because it was a little squeeze, you can hear it. I'll go ahead and slide it out. A little bit of a squeeze, so. Yeah, I don't know how 
how it's gonna fit when everything is together. But uh, and they're about the wires is a little tight. A little bit sandy. But I let's see here. Step fourteen. The motor and rear gearbox assembly. Ooh, fun part. gears I just seen. Alright, bag D. The main shaft must have changed from design. Mine is like a half shoe one. On there it's full, but it's still cool. And we got our main shaft here. And we gotta get a 1.5 by 6.5 pin. Shaft that you're gonna need, or the pin that you're gonna need is gonna be the short one. It's almost the shortest one in the kit. And then we're gonna go to this closer side here. There's some metal burrs in there, we'll just push that out. pin and the spare gear mount. Slide that in there like that. And take a two by four screw. Make sure there's enough light. And take this two by four screw right here. And it should go. <clears throat> into the shaft. Whoa. Nice and finger tight like that. 3 to 6 to 2.5 bearing <clears throat> on the rear gearbox. Make sure it's going to go like this. The bearing in there, anyways. If not, I'll take it out. Um, here's the right side that we need. Got bearing on that side, bearing on that side. And we just take this shaft. It's got to sit on the side of it. Okay, so we gotta put a screw in first, and then we'll put the shaft through. That's what she said. So it just needs a normal two by four screw.
seem right. We're close all the way up. It's gonna rub against that screw. tooth gear all right i'm going to bed you guys <laughs> i don't feel like building this trans right now peace like share subscribe and as always god bless and i'll see you guys in the next video i think we've done a lot so far yeah we're about to get the trans built oh yeah